Hello, we're back with video lectures. Now we're going to talk about the Poisson summation formula. So the Poisson summation formula is a very important formula to calculate uh, to evaluate sums or to uh, perform proofs. So first we have the Poisson summation formula. Then we have a first example and then a second example. So the Poisson summation formula is given by this expression where the Fourier transformer G of K of G of K over T is given by uh, this other formula. So then first we just say, okay, so uh, this sum of F of T and T where T is the period of the periodic sum is going to be everything F of T and then F of T is going to have this Fourier transform. So then if we elaborate on the Fourier transform and then we replace f of t by the sum that we just said it was and then performing this change of variable tau goes to t plus nt that means that t goes to tau minus nt and then that means that for t equal to plus or minus tau here which are the limits of this integral so tau goes to plus or minus t halves plus nt, which is the same of one half, uh, which multiplies two n plus minus one times t. Okay, so then when we replace this evaluations here in the expression for the Fourier transform, so we get this uh, exponential factor, which is equal to one because of... Uh, e to the i theta equals to cos theta plus i sine theta okay so then and then we are left with this form now what we're going to do is that we're going to implement the sum so then to implement the sum what we do is that we replace for several values of n and then we take the limit of n uh, going to infinity okay so then when we just reorganize a little bit we will see that this lower limit is the same as this upper limit and then we can it will continue showing this trend the same here this lower limit is the same as this upper limit so finally what we have is that we have an evaluation between uh, this limit and this upper limit which is what we have here and when we take the limit of n tending to infinity we just arrive at this expression here which is the same as g of k over t then g of k is equal to g of k over t and therefore when we replace everything back into the Fourier transform for f of t we get this uh, replacement so we just exchange g of k capital G of K by a small G of K over T and then since F of T is just this sum so then we get the Poisson summation formula okay so then this took us three minutes and a half okay so we're on time now if we want to evaluate a sum for instance this sum so it's a little bit cumbersome, but uh, we can do it using the Poisson summation formula. So then the first thing we have to do is that we have to choose some f of t. Okay, so then we choose f of t in such a way that when we calculate the summation of uh, from minus infinity to infinity of f of n, we will end up getting something similar to the sum that we want to evaluate and by applying the Poisson summation formula we just see that this is the summation from k minus infinity to plus infinity of g of k and then g of k its Fourier transform can be evaluated in the following way and then we invoke Cauchy's um, uh, integral theorem of the residue to actually evaluate this integral we have two poles okay let's let's see this here t squared plus one is equal to t plus i times t 
times t minus i that means that we have poles in t equals to plus minus i so we have a pull here in i and we have a pull here in minus i okay so then this is the situation so then in this slide we can see that we use for positive k for this positive k theta of k what we have is that the pole t equals to minus i is enclosed by the a contour in the lower complex plane and for theta and for theta of minus k that means for positive for for negative k we enclose this pole t equal to i in the contour in the upper complex plane so then we invoke the Cauchy's theorem uh, here you can just follow the procedure it's uh, just quite simple we evaluate here at the value of the pole that we're enclosing here we evaluate at the value of the pole that we're enclosing and then we end up with this expression then that means that g of k we have now g of k then we replace back in this sum we get this sum we split the sum in two sums plus e to the zero which is just one the value of this sum and the value of this sum are identical as you could just check and then uh, what we have here is that we end up with this expression this is a this this thing here is a geometric sum then we use the formula for the geometric sum which is uh, the radius divided by one minus the radius of the geometric series and then we arrive at this formula now if we express one and e to the minus two pi as the product of e to the pi's and e to the minus pi's or e to the minus pi times e to the minus pi so then we can just cross out e to the minus pi uh, upstairs and downstairs and then we get this expression which is nothing but pi could uh, hyperbolic tangent of pi so then this is the result of the evaluation of the sum it's might get a little bit cumbersome at some point but in general it's quite simple to evaluate these sums using the Poisson summation formula so now we are interested in proving this is the second example so then we're interested in proving uh, this identity so for that in the Poisson summation formula we choose an f of t equal to e to the minus t square and of course the period is the square root of pi z uh, as it's quite easy to see this uh, um, here will be the period square there as f of n t see it will be equal to e to the minus n square root of pi z all square this is n here the dummy variable and this is the period okay so then this is how we proceed here and then we write the Poisson summation formula then this is the Fourier transform then we replace everything here in the Fourier transform then here we complete squares we take one of them out of the integral and one of them here to complete the square so then now we have complete squares the the result of this integral is very well known is a square root of pi and then we replace everything in the formula we have now g of k over square root of z which is this square root of pi and square root of pi go away and then we have show uh the identity that we wanted to demonstrate in the very beginning so then this is just a simple use of Poisson summation formula i think this is really useful to know and that's what i'm posting this video thanks for watching and this was just nine minutes and 55 seconds thanks